So it's quite wet this morning. In fact, it's very wet. It rained all last night and it's supposed to rain all day today. And this is England at its finest. Uh, but we are shooting today. Um, and luckily we're all inside, so not a huge deal, because it is quite early and I'm quite tired. We've had to fit a lot of kit in the back and there's just about enough space. No, no emergency stops. Yeah, no emergency <laughs> stops and um, Adam is going to be well and truly penned uh, in. Penned in, yes, exactly. So I'm sure he'll he'll love that. This this weekend's phase drive medium mobile. Oh yes, the uh, Hyundai, Hyundai Tucson. Courtesy of... Courtesy of budget rent car. There we get, go. Get them in, get them in. Oh, you want to, that's a, you want, do you know, do you know how to? Yeah, lock the doors. <laughs> uh, I'll turn the engine off, maybe that'll do. I, we just, just try and open it again. Oh, let's it's got see. child locks on it. Yeah, but why would it have child locks on the outside? You, <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> All right, try now, try now. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. I bet you did that on purpose to get... Uh, stuff That's one going. of the more interesting features of this car. I, I don't know. I think it's got a have you, have you got enough? Car. Have you got enough space there, Adam? Yeah. Um, have you got everything you need, Adam? Well, I mean, <laughs> we've got the camera, haven't we? Yes, um, we do. <laughs> oh, you're filming. See, the reason we're filming a Sunday is two reasons. Uh, one, the store is not open, and two, it's free parking in this car park on a Sunday. And Can I park there? Uh, would have thought so. The, uh, this, 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 what does it say? Does it say anything? Yeah, I think we can. Screw it, yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. Perfect. And that oh, is the place we're here for. So we have just finished filming all day at Bar Place Music, um, shooting some YouTube videos for them uh, to promote the channel and promote the store. And uh, we shot some stuff with uh, a couple of Fender vaporizers, one customized one, one uh, vanilla one, and then did some stuff on pedals. And lastly, to finish, did some stuff on acoustic stuff as well. Adam is just finishing off some awesome slider shots. Yeah, um, he's been on slider all day. We've done very well, haven't you? Oh, <laughs> that sounds so patronising. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then didn't you, didn't you do so? And then Neil's been running audio and also been a star of, of the uh, channel, as have I, along with uh, the other Darcy down here as well, um, shopkeeper, as well. And um, so that will be up sometime in the near future. I'm not sure when it'll be on their channel, but we'll share it on our Facebook page, of course. And uh, keep an eye out for more stuff from us um, in the future. So I was going to actually end the vlog there, but I decided I wanted to talk you through the process of not only filming guitar and amp and pedal demos, but also the editing process, because we're filming with uh, multiple cameras and the editing process is more than just sort of trying to synchronize the clips manually. Premiere has a lot of stuff for multi cameras that I really wanted to try and utilize for the next few edits. So I thought I'd show you through what I'm doing that and I'll run you through uh, how we set up everything for the shoot. I'm also using one of these uh, lapel or lav mics. Um, I think the audio is better and again Premiere has this thing I didn't even realize it had this which is a bit dumb uh, but Premiere has this thing where it can automatically synchronize audio. So the filming process for the Bath Place music videos was interesting. We'd not done it before it was something new but I had an, a good idea of how to do it. Um, I've done multicam shoots before and it was very similar to that sort of thing. So we shot in the upstairs room which is their acoustic room and now it didn't have um, any kind of audio dampening or any kind of soundproofing. So we had to work around that and there are limitations. Unfortunately, if we had the budget, we would obviously use a studio, but we had to use what was available to us. And the best option was to use the upstairs of the shop. This has, it has good light, it is probably the most room and, and it, it suits the aesthetic and we were able to get quite a nice set from it. So we set it up with uh, two people in front of the camera and we had the GH5, this one uh, as the main A cam, and then we had this GH4 on a slider to the left, that was Adam running that one. And then we also had Neil's D810 as a third B cam, 
which is off to the right, getting a slightly lower angle, wider one on whoever was nearest the camera. So then we had uh, Rode video mics, the main one on top of this one on as uh, A-cam, and then we had uh, video mic go on GH4 for B cam. This was more redundancy audio. It wasn't what we were planning to use primarily. We then ran all the the pro audio through Cubase that was running through an eight channel mixer. So we mic'd up the amps with SM57s. SM57 is, is pretty standard for what, what you'd use for any kind of amp micing and most instrument micing. Generally speaking, the frequency range they're very, very similar to SM58, just voiced ever so slightly differently, and 57s are better for instrument recordings than 58s, just by, by a fraction. You'll just get a little bit more uh, of the characteristics of the amp with a 57. So the Vox, we used uh, AKG C1000 and C3000, pointed directly at the talent, as close as we could get without being in the way of the microphones. Now, ideally, I think we've decided that we're going to use lav mics next time they seem to be better at cutting out the reflections of the room the audio we got was still very very good audio for the vox but i think we we've decided that uh, to avoid having too many things going in too many wires trailing it would make more sense to use lav mics running into tascam or similar devices and then synchronize later and then when it came to acoustic guitars we mic'd them up we close mic them with the sm57s and then we also ran line in and we're basically doing a blend with those. Neil is currently working on the audio, so he's gonna just do a bit of EQ and compression just to bring out the right areas and obviously mix it for whoever's playing lead and whoever's playing rhythm during the demonstrations. And that will give us a really good quality audio recording of the amps and the guitars, which is what you, you know, audio is 50% of any video production. For music demonstrations, audio is more important than video. Like you won't get video, but the audio is so important. So we, we really took no chance and we took basically all our kit and we used most of it. So as far as actual filming goes, I wanted it to be feel very natural and having two people on camera is, I think, infinitely better than having one person on camera because you can just riff off each other, you kind of bounce off each other. And we were very fortunate that Darcy, who's a shopkeeper at Bath Place Music, is, is very articulate and very good on camera and just knows what he's talking about. He doesn't sort of stop and start quite a lot. We were able to just literally do one take and I don't think there are any real stops and starts. Me and Neil were both in on the videos. Neil did very, very well. It's actually the first, I think it's the first video he'd ever done properly like this. I'd done a bit of, obviously I talk to the camera like this sometimes. I'd done some live streams before. So I was fairly, fairly happy on camera, but actually I did find that I was still kind of umming and ahhing a little bit and going a bit awkward. So it's gonna, gonna re require a little bit of editing, but that's more down to practice and stuff. Cause I think Darcy has done other videos in the past and he's worked with, you know, he, um, he's been on one um, or two of Ryan's videos from Waterloo Music, which is their sister shop. But about having having talent on screen, it is important to have people who are comfortable on camera, can articulate, you know, project quite well. Projecting is really important and you need to have confidence. You also just need to have rapport with the other person on camera. It really shows, if not, unfortunately, we were really lucky that you know, everyone who was on on screen, you know, had rapport, we'd already got on. We, we already knew Darcy beforehand, so both me and Neil were perfectly, you know, we were easily able to, to get into the video without having any kind of awkwardness, which is really, really useful. So the way we shot it was first to do a five minute jam, just to kind of show off the sounds of everything that we can then intercut with the demonstration and the actual talking and the discussions that had throughout the video. After that five minutes, we then stopped and we started again, and then we just shot for 20 minutes. And the reason we shot for 20 minutes was because we were limited by the D810 will only film for 20 minutes before shutting off. GH4 will only shoot for 30. Fortunately, the GH5 will shoot uh, as long as it wants, which is why I love this camera so much. But 20 minutes was more than enough time. We had just a, we didn't have a script as much as we just had a basic outline of what needs to be covered. And, and you know, Darcy was again fantastic on camera, so he just basically flowed from one subject to another without there being any real issue, and it just felt completely natural. And we'll, we'll only have to do minimal editing. I think really the only real editing we'll have to do as far as cutting stuff down will just be for time, so it's not really, the, the videos aren't too long, which is really, really you know, it's exactly what you want when you're, when you're filming something like that. So once we'd shot all the stuff upstairs in our studio that we'd kind of set up throughout the day, I then went and shot some bits in the workshop, which is a really important part of the store and I attached it to my Zion Crane V2. I had Darcy hosting it. I set the GH5 to constant autofocus. Now the constant autofocus 
isn't amazing, but it worked pretty well for the most part. If you select just a central point of focus, which is what I normally do, it normally holds focus pretty well, especially if you've got reasonably good lighting and there's, there's reasonable contrast. It's not the perfect system, it's not phase detection, but it works moderately well for what you want. So I had Darcy mic'd up with this lav mic that I'm using now. It actually only cost me 10 pounds, by the way. I got it on Amazon. Uh, it's a brand called CQ. Works pretty well. It's not a Rode mic, but uh, for 10 pounds and much better audio quality than, than just sort of on-camera audio. Uh, it's pretty good. Initially, I would have used a Rode mic on top of the Lumix camera. However, it makes balancing the gimbal a lot harder. I decided not to have a microphone on the camera and instead opt for a lav mic, which I thought was a better option because I'd be moving around a lot and wouldn't have consistent audio if I didn't do that. We literally filmed for maybe two or three minutes and Darcy would explain what had been done or what hypothetically had been done to the instrument or the amp in the workshop and what they are able to do. And I just go around and basically, you know, film some nice shots, keep it nice and smooth. And he'd just talk for sort of, you know, three to five minutes and those will be intercut with the main episodes. So that's basically how we shot everything. Using knowledge of stuff that I've shot in the past and we've all got previous knowledge and doing a bit of research beforehand. And actually the most important research was to watch other similar videos on YouTube for both for inspiration and to both figure out how they were doing things. The research and the prior knowledge to shooting this really helped us make the most of the day and shoot some really good looking professional videos which is ultimately what we're always aiming to do at Phase Drive Media. So just to run you through a little bit of how I set the project up, it's a bit different to how we'd normally set it up as I mentioned before and this is what it looks like currently. We've got this project set up as normal, we've got it on a 4k timeline. Before I would have layered up clips on here one after the other and I would have switched between the two by switching off the channel and then seeing what was working. But I discovered, and some of you will already know this, if you go into multi-camera mode, now what I've done is I've basically created a multi-cam sequence. So you do this by selecting all the clips you want to use in your project window, and then create a multi-cam sequence, bring it into the timeline, and then change the view, and then what you can do is you can see it switches as I'm selecting the different shots. So when you play through, you can basically create a live mix as you go and then alter it later. And so then when you play it back and when you stop playing, it's already split the files and then when you can play it back, you can see where it's gone and then you can alter it. GH4 footage actually splits the file every four gig. So if you're shooting like a 20 minute video, you'll get about four or five different clips. Now, the way to turn this one into a multicam sequence is to select all the clips together and then nest it, and then create a multicam sequence from the nested sequence. It sounds, it's a lot of sequencing, but that's how you do it basically. And then you can uh, link all those clips up and then basically do like a live edit as you go, which is definitely a much better way of doing it than the way I was doing it. So I hope this video has been informative and if anyone is looking to do this and I hope it's helped, uh, you'll be able to see these videos hopefully very, very soon and we'll have plenty more coming out. I think Dan has got a vlog coming out sooner or later. The order of vlogs changes depending on who's doing what editing for the actual company. But yeah, check out our channel, subscribe to it, check out our Facebook, check out our website. And of course, if you are UK based or indeed outside the UK and you want to hire us, head to our website or drop us an email and uh, we'd love to work with you. Goodbye.